My name's Matt Whitecross. I'm the director of Sex and Drugs and Rock and Roll. It's a surreal biopic of Ian Jury, who's the godfather of punk rock. Paul Virag, who was the writer, had the idea a while back of doing a boxing movie, and he suddenly thought, well, actually, the whole story of Ian Jury's life is more like a boxing picture. He was someone who overcame huge odds to become you know, one of the, the greatest pop stars of the UK. One, two, three, four! They didn't want to do a straightforward biopic, and that's really what hooked me. I kind of felt like, as long as we're not just doing a conventional, by the numbers version of this, of this story, because he was an unconventional person, if we're going to do something that's a little bit alternative, then I was interested. We got a feeling that the film was cursed. Every single day, there'd be another major catastrophe. And whether on the first day, we had Ray Winston for one day, which was a major coup for us. We felt like, you know, this, he was the first person who signed on apart from Andy, the main actor. And he was the perfect person for that part, playing, playing Andy's dad. And he was amazing. He gave like, the performance of his lifetime. He was fantastic. And the next morning, I came in to watch the rushes. And it turned out there'd been a problem at the lab or a problem with the camera department. And we weren't insured, and we'd lost 50% of his, his rushes. He'd gone to the States and was growing a beard, so we couldn't even get him back in. And that was day one. And then um, last day, we were shooting an underwater sequence, and uh, we uh, got to a point where I was thinking, something, something terrible's gonna happen. We've had a, a catastrophe every single day. We're either gonna lose one of the actors underwater, or some, something bad's gonna happen. The next morning, I, I, I got a call from the line producer saying that they'd lost all the rushes in the, in the lab, and we weren't insured to go back into Pinewood to reshoot the scene. So we spent two weeks in post trying to stitch together, frame by fry, frame, every single bit we could find from the underwater sequence that would actually work. There's so many times, you know, so many different projects where you might be working in it three, four, five, six, ten years, and it never sees the light of day. So for me, it's just a massive thrill to be out there showing it to people. And I think there's something about a Tribeca audience which isn't the same as any other festival. There's something, there's, there's, there's incredible enthusiasm for film. You don't necessarily, it's not a kind of an industry uh, thing. It's about, it's just about people who are passionate about film. So for me to be able to, to bring a film there is, is great.